set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. You have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loves you. Welcome again to Jesus is Answer Ministries broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales. I, I pray y'all heard yesterday, but get ready today. I'm teaching on trading places with him. Who's him, Pastor Scales? The Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ became sin for us who knew no sin. Why? So we could be made the righteousness of God in him. Listen, saints. God knows you and I ain't never going to live perfect. So he sent Jesus to live perfect for us, to give us an example that we would have somebody to trust in and follow to show us how to do it. And Jesus has to give us this righteousness. It can never be something that we can earn. It can never be something that we can work for. Listen. When God loves you, you can't have no performance in it. You can't have no, no works in it. When God loves you, it's to produce the works that you're going to live every day. If you'll let the Lord love you. Now let's go back to 2 Corinthians 5. I want to get a little further today. Uh, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So God made Jesus to be seen for us. Now the key to that, the key is we get the right picture of Jesus. He was the one with no sin. Uh, it, 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 by believing this, it makes you know that he knows everything and he can show us how. Jesus told a woman caught in the act of adultery, neither do I condemn thee, which really God was speaking through Jesus. And Jesus told that woman, listen to this, go and sin no more. What? What? Go and sin no more. He told others that. Why? Because he possessed the very love and life of God for us, not just him living this, but for us. To go and see it no more. And Jesus had to be the reason that she wasn't going to go do that no more. It couldn't have been nothing in her strength that she was going to do to live that. It was the words that came from God through Jesus' lips. And when the Spirit speaks to us, uh, and Jesus speaks to the Spirit, and He speaks to us, that's, that's God talking to us and leading and guiding us in all truth. Amen. And so, so God made him. And you, you've got to understand, Jesus was the one with no sin. So, so you can trust him that he knows how to deliver. Let, let me tell y'all something. If anybody been on this earth that been tempted like the devil done did me and never messed up once, never sinned once, never disobeyed God once, I need to follow somebody like that. I need to trust somebody with my life who's like that. And, and so God made him, look, he, he took our sins and laid them on Jesus so that Jesus would, would, would be punished for what we did wrong. And then he turned around and see a lot of people believe that. But they don't believe that God turned around and and accredited you for the way Jesus lived. See, people don't believe that part. But they, they do believe God laid all our sins on Jesus. And Jesus became guilty for the, for the guilty so that the guilty can become innocent based on the way he lived. So God is accrediting you and me for how Jesus lived. Because there's no way we can live to be perfect. And so God wants to see us in Christ. There's no way God can see you and all that stuff wrong with you. And so what you got to do is receive righteousness <laughs> as a free gift. Now, let, 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 I, I'm in a hurry, but I want to read you this. In, in Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, 
much more. Glory to God. What? Much. See, don't never let what's wrong with you, what you're struggling in, don't never let that be much more than what God did in Jesus. And God did more in Jesus than what you and I done did wrong. So if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more, they which receive, watch it now, no, no, not you live right. They which receive abundance of grace, see, the abundance of the ability of the love of God that was in Jesus. The Apostle Paul told us uh, in, in, in 1 Timothy, uh, chapter 2 verse 1 thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus be strong in the ability of God that's in Christ Jesus be, be strong in it what? in the perfect life of Christ be strong in what was in Jesus that caused him to never sin how he trusted God be strong in that be strong in that the grace that's in Christ and so, so watch that by, by, you must receive the abundance of grace and see, two things you're going to receive. You're going to receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. The gift of righteousness is Jesus near perfect and God's imputing that to us. Whew. What other way could God do it? How could God see us perfect? Uh, when he when we receive what Jesus did and how Jesus lived. And here it is. But I'm going to show it to you again. The gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Now listen verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnate. That's Adam. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men, the justification of life. So, so listen carefully now. If, if the sin of Adam can screw up the whole world. What sin? Then the obedience of one man can make the whole world right. If you can have, listen, I'm, I'm telling y'all saying, I, I, I used to be on drug, crack, cocaine, heroin. I was an alcoholic, a gambler. I smoked weed every day, marijuana. I, I was a, 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 a pimp, a get rock. I just, I, I, I was just a mess. The thing that changed me when I gave my life to Jesus, June 30th, 1988, 10.35 p.m. in the Samaritan Drug Treatment Center on Shed Avenue off North 6, across from Tennessee Titan Stadium. I was clean on the inside. And I was righteous. I didn't even know I was righteous. But I, Jesus gave me that gift of being in right standing with God. And everything I asked him, he done for me. Everything, everything that I asked him, he done for me. That's righteousness. And God want us to, to, to bear fruit. Jesus said in John 15, 7, if you abide in me, my words abide. Jesus said, this is a kept with these words. Because they, 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 they have to ring a bell in you by the Spirit. Jesus said, if you, he didn't say if you abide in the Bible. And we know all about is God's word, but it ain't all God's word spoken to the church. Jesus said, if you abide in me, and he, he specifically talking about getting prayers answered where you bear fruit from him. You know, talking about prophecies and things God said going to happen. And, and we know we can go back to Daniel, Ezekiel, and many of the prophets and what they prophesied and then what God told John. We're, we're talking about bearing fruit. From Jesus, he's the only one that, that is divine. And without him, we can't bear no fruit. And so Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. And look, look what Jesus said. You can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. And you got to read verse 8 with that in John 15. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciple. Then he goes on to tell you what the fruit is. As the Father loved me, verse 9, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you, Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. That's what God is. Even as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
So Jesus says, the same relationship that I have with God, I'm trying to get you all to have that same relationship with me. Amen. Oh, that's good preaching. That's good preaching. Amen. I know some of y'all like that. Amen to that. Now, listen to verse 19 in Romans chapter 5. For it's by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. A lot of y'all don't even have no problem about how you used to be. I used to curse and I drank and, and, and robbed and stole and lied and cheated and sell, sold dope. And, 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 you know, we had no problem with that. I never woke up and thought something was wrong with me. Well, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Why would we still keep struggling and we righteous? Why can't we just cook on to that? By one man, I want you to get this. Now listen to the Spirit carefully. So by the obedience of one. No, 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 he didn't say by your obedience. He said by his obedience. Not by yours. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So if, if, if I'm righteous by the obedience of Jesus, then God imputed to Jesus what I did wrong, and he imputed to me what Jesus did right. Oh, glory. Oh, that's good news. See, see, we, we've been trying to earn this stuff. Well, my pastor scales. You know, now look, now look, we all got to live right. Yeah, after Jesus teach you how. He gives you this gift of his obedience. People need to accept this gift of his obedience. The gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. Oh, I done accepted it. I done accepted it. Pastor, who do you mean you don't say? I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm the righteousness of God in Jesus' obedience. <laughs> well, do you have to do anything? Yes, I have to live and trust it in Christ and doing what he tell me to do every day. So I can live in this. Listen, listen, he gives you this gift of righteousness when you're born again. But he don't give you how to live it unless you continue to abide in him. That means you're continually trusting in him and doing what Jesus tell you to do. And then you have to have a respect and a reverence for Jesus' words. He said in John 15, 7, quote Jesus, if you abide in me and, and, see, answer conjunction, and my words. You know, I believe, saints, I believe the majority of the body of Christ do not put emphasis on abiding in Jesus and his words. His words. I remember Jesus over in John 8, you know, he had told him, I can do nothing of myself. But whatever I hear my father say, that I do. And, and Jesus said, the father's not left me alone, but I always do those things that please him. And after Jesus got through saying that to, to the Jews, many of them believed on him. And when they believed on him, because he was telling them how he was yielded to God, Jesus said, if you, get this now, if you continue in my word, you know, I'm just telling you, he didn't say continue in, in the Old Testament. He, Jesus said continue my word. You will be my disciple indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. That they're in his words. Truth is in Jesus. He is the truth. And so, so Jesus said that. He didn't say, he didn't point us really to nobody else. He, he got them, the, 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 the Jews, to go back and look at at, at, at the prophets prophesying about him coming, but he never pointed you back to the prophets to teach you. That was to fulfill what God had said through them, but he never pointed you to them to get revelation. Amen. And so, so Jesus, by the obedience of one, uh, many made righteous. And people are just trying to live right in their own strength. All you're doing is failing. When is the last time somebody done walked up to you and said you look like Jesus? Hmm. Uh, have anybody ever just walked up and just tell you that, you know? You look like Jesus. And 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 and, and I, you know, saying I'm not bragging, I'm, but but I'm just telling y'all the truth. I mean, people people say that to me regularly that I never have met in my life. 
They said, man, I see light on your face. Well, where? I, I just, I've been spending time with the Lord. It, the apostles, they had to take notice of them. They meet with Jesus. You ought to smell like Jesus, man. I mean, if you've been out there working real hard all day, you ought to smell like that way you done been all day. But if you've been with the master, oh, glory to God, if you've been with the master, you ought to smell like him, look like him, act like him. Why? Because he's teaching you and empowering you how to do that. So by the obedience, the disobedience of one man, many were made sinners. And if Adam's disobedience can bring that into the world, by the obedience, he brought that in the world. We are all responsible for our own sin. But he brought this in the world. This rebellion. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. And our, our obedience, uh, 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 is, it, it should be looked at Jesus live this perfect, and then we trust him to show us how. Now, now let's go a little deeper. Now, I told you we're going to go a little deeper today. In um in First John chapter three verse five. Oh goodness. First John chapter three verse five. And you know that the Son that 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 uh that Jesus was manifested. Now get this now, get this now. Jesus was manifested to take away our sins. Now think about that. Come on now, don't 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 rush this. You know, some people, they they, they they so hungry for revelation and knowledge. It'll puff you up. But if you're hungry to do what Jesus say, you'll get truth. And and sometimes people in, in such a hurry to, to learn more and more to, to be something instead of to live something. And you know that Jesus was manifested. You know he was manifested. Now get this, get this. To take away our sins. This is big. This is big. That Jesus was manifested to take away our sins. But saints, he done done that. And, and, and a lot of times, people are just really struggling with sin. Because they haven't heard the truth that Jesus done took all of them away. And so they just really, uh, the feelings, the emotions, the devils really struggle. And Jesus done took all your sins away. They don't want you to believe it because there's so much peace in that. And so the Bible said he was manifest to take away our sins. And, 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 and in him is no sin. Oh, there it is again. See, See, you're not going to trust Jesus to take away your sins if you don't believe not none in him. And Jesus was manifested to take away our sins. And listen, he swapped places with us. He traded places with us. He became what we did wrong so we could become what he did right. God imputed to Jesus all the ugliness that you and I have ever done. And then then he turned around and imputed to us all the holiness that Jesus lived. Be ye holy, for I am holy. See, we get to be what he is now. We, we get to love the way he loved. We get to forgive the way he forgave. We get to rule the devil the same way he did. We get to live in Jesus' victory saints. And so, now, now, now get verse 6. Oh, verse 6 is, is, is tough, 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 tough. Tough verses. They're not tough when people love the Lord. They're just tough when you know you're ministering sometimes to some people that don't. Whoever batteth in Jesus, sinneth not. Better get another translation for that. Well, but oh, that's good. See, see, people are taught to have a false faith in Jesus Christ. What do you mean, Pascal? They don't have action with it. Do you have 
any fruit well of you are now ashamed? Are you walking in something that you are ashamed of? Bothers you? Shouldn't be there? You wish it wasn't there? Well, the end of those things are death. But Jesus can set you free if you'll learn to obey the doctrine that, that has been delivered to you from Christ, from the apostles. And um, let me read you this over in the, in the New Living. The, New, it, the, the King James says that that uh, whoever abides in him sinneth not, whoever sinneth have not seen him, neither known him. Now, oh, oh, that bother people. But God, I know the Lord. God be good to me. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about where he teach you how to quit sinning. He's not talking about him doing something for you. He's talking about what you're going to live in like him. With his strength, his ability, his grace, his mercy, his kindness. Because God gave Jesus everything. All power in heaven and earth. Everything God got, God delivered it to Jesus. Really? I'm going to teach a series later on uh, on the blessing of Abraham. Really, saying God, God didn't, God didn't bless us. He blessed Christ. All our spiritual blessings are in Christ. And so we have to be hooked up with Jesus so we can walk in and be partakers of them blessings. It's the way God gave them all us. We would mess them up. We would, we would be separated from God. You, you can't have a relationship with God based on your performance. You, you can only have a relationship with God based on what God do for you. Thank God. If we didn't have 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. That's based on Jesus and what he did for us to keep us in a relationship with God. Fellowship with God. It has to be based on Jesus Christ. That's good preaching again. Praise the Lord. 1 John 3. Chapter 3. Oh, here, verse 6. Here it is. Here it is. So if we continue to live in him. Who? Who? who now, now, now catch, catch the revelation. If we continue to live in him. Who's him, Pascal? Get this now. Get this now. I'm, I'm going to tell you. You know, sometimes people, got so, they so used to using Jesus' title. You know, Jesus Christ. And, and you know, and don't have no revelation of who Jesus Christ is. What Jesus Christ taught. What Jesus Christ said. What Jesus Christ did. That's what you got to live in. You can't live in this title. Uh, when, when, when you live in him, saints, you have to be believing and doing what he tell you to do. So if anyone continues to live in how he told you to go, believe in him. <clears throat> uh, if you're going to live in, 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 in what Jesus commanded you to do, listen carefully. If you continue to live in him, we won't sin either. And what he's, what he's telling you is you're not going to practice sin when you live in Jesus. you just not going to. I ain't done it in 23 years. And, and, and you're not going to practice sin when you live in Jesus. You can't. You can't, you can't live in him and practice sin. You can't do it. And, uh, and and people think they can, but let me read you the rest of uh, First John. But those who keep on sinning, see, this, this sin, it's not you messing up. This is sin when Jesus done told you not to do this, and you keep on doing. Because <laughs> we have to have room to mature, and so Jesus only holds us accountable for the life we have. And so once that light comes to us, he holds us accountable to walk in what he done showed us and revealed to us and told us to do. So this is the sin he's talking about. So those who keep on sinning have never known him or understood who he is. Now, now, now get that before I close today. Pascal, what is it? Why, why do you say I don't understand Jesus? Because the Bible teaches when you understand Jesus, 
It's living in who he is and doing what he tell you to do every day. And it's no way you're going to keep seeing it in your life. And you do that. And, and what, what people don't understand is Jesus has no sin. And that gives you no excuse to live in anything in your life that ain't right. When, when you know he don't have no sin and he knows how to teach you how to not be like that. What I want to make available to you, trade in places with him, part one. On the screen, uh, Saints, you can go on our web page and order these with your credit cards. Also, you can mail us in a check or money order to Jesus' Answer Ministries. Post Office Box 292112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And for $30, a love gift of $30, we'll send this to And if you ask me, I'll send you a free copy of my new book, God's Grace Explained. So order these today. <clears throat> Amen. You can go on uh, robertscalesministries.org and go check our catalog out. And uh, I, I know these will be a tremendous blessing to you. Also, I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church. You can go on, on, on the web, on our webpage, robertscalesministries.org and get directions. A church that's alive is worth the drive. We, we got people that drive three hours every Sunday to come to church. That's how blessed they get. Uh, people drive an hour. It's nothing. And uh, we have services Sunday morning, uh, 9 o'clock Sunday school. Oh, you ought to be in them Sunday school. Sometimes they, they go on past, past the regular time. The Spirit start moving. One thing Jesus gets to do with Jesus as a church is he has liberty. He just gets to move the way he wants to. And, and people get taught how to mature. So y'all come out, get directions, praise God. Our phone number at the church is 615-237-9802. We know that you'll be tremendously blessed. Well, I want to thank my friends and partners. And you know, Saints, uh, you all that, that use credit cards, you can go online to robscaleministry.org and donate. And I, I, I thank the Lord for all of you that, that are praying for us, praying for me and the ministry. And you know this message needs to go around the world. So thank you so much for helping us. I, I love you. I pray for my partners, my friends. Thank you so much for helping me get the gospel out. Well, my prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus' His answer ministries, I'm Pastor Robert Scarce. Remember now, the new commandment is not what you can do for God, but live in Jesus how he loved you on the cross. Have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.